So we've just finished placing all the concrete for this deck. And one question you may be asking yourself is, how do we determine the layout, the size, the spacing for these footings? To answer that question, you're gonna to wanna to go to your code book where it's gonna give you tables that's gonna help you understand how to determine the size and spacing for your specific deck. So to use the tables, we're gonna need some additional information to make those calculations. One of which is gonna be the dead load, which is essentially the weight of the wood itself that you're using to build the deck. Then we're gonna look at the live load, which for our case is gonna be a hot tub, but if you're in the colder part of the country, you might need to consider something like a snow load. Then we're gonna compile that information with the size of the beam that we wanna use and the size of the joist that we wanna use, put all that information together, and that's gonna give you the calculation that you'll wanna use for your deck. Once you know how many posts and their spacing, you can lay out the locations on the ground. You want the deck to be square with the house, and since the dimensions are too big for a framing square or a speed square, we're gonna use a trick. First, we're gonna make a mark eight foot down the side of the house, and then next, we're gonna make a mark six foot down the side of the string. Now adjust the string until a diagonal measurement between those two points equals exactly 10 feet, and then you'll know that your string is perfectly square with the house. By the way, that's one piece of geometry from high school that you actually can use. The footings we dug here are two feet deep by 20 inches in diameter. The dimensions are gonna depend on your location and the weight that you're supporting like we talked about earlier. This house is on the Gulf Coast, so we don't have to worry about frost heave, but in colder climates, you may have to go a bit deeper and make sure that you're below that frost line. Your local codes can tell you exactly how far you need to go. Each footing has several pieces of rebar that are then wired together and add to the overall strength of that footing. Then, as the holes are filled with concrete, I like to add a piece of cylindrical cardboard form at the top to help level the concrete at the surface and just make it look a little bit cleaner. You can use these forms for the entire footing, but I like letting the concrete directly connect to the soil and leave less chance for movement. Plus, I can cut several of those pieces from one tube and I only have to buy one or two instead of buying 10 or 12. The code suggests to help water drain properly to slope the top of the footing just enough to let the water drain off the surface. I do this by floating the top in a circular motion to make the surface convex. The next step when the concrete is cured is to attach the metal post bases. These are attached with six inch concrete anchors into the footing and then we're ready to set the post in position. We just had these footings inspected, but you'll wanna check with your local building department to determine when they wanna check your work. Now we're ready to move on to beams and joists.